today we are diving into an introduction to python programming for beginners a programming language that has made a significant impact across the tech industry python's value can't be overstated as it has grown into a powerhouse in the variety of fields which includes software development data science and artificial intelligence let's take a deeper look at why python is such a game changer and why it matters with that in mind i am priya from edureka and i welcome to this session on introduction to python programming for beginners without any further delay let's go through the agenda for today's session first we will begin with an introduction to python following that we will explore its features and applications as we progress we will explore some python frameworks and we also know that python has an extensive library ecosystem so we will also take a look at some libraries for a deeper understanding then we will dive into an exciting part of this session by exploring the basic syntax of python afterwards we will examine some notable companies that use as python for their operations and development finally we will wrap up this session by discussing career opportunities and salary prospects for python developers but before that we get started please consider subscribing to our youtube channel and hit the bell icon button to stay updated on the latest tech content by edureka also visit the edureka website for training and certification courses and the link is provided in the description box below without any further delay let's get started with the introduction to python python was created by guido van rossum in late 1980s and released in 1991 It is a high-level programming language known for its simplicity and versatility. Python has a vast community support and known for its readability as well. Python has an active cross-platform compatibility, community support and dominance in the fields like data science and artificial intelligence. Now, let's explore some features of Python. First in the list we have easy to learn and use. Basically, Python is an excellent language for beginners due to its simple syntax. Since it is a similar to a English language, it is very simple to read and write the code. Next, we have interpreted language. This means Python code is executed line by line by an interpreter at a runtime, rather than being compiled into machine code like other languages such as C or C++. And then we have free and open source. Python has a huge and active developer community that contributes to its growth as it is a open source and free to use. The next feature of the Python is cross-platform compatibility. Python is available for the variety of operating system which includes Windows, Mac operating system and Linux. You can also develop a code in one platform and run it on another platform with a very minimal modifications. Followed by this we have dynamic typing. It means that there is no need to declare the variable types. Python itself interprets the data type at a runtime. And then we have object oriented programming everything in a python is an object and object oriented programming is a fundamental paradigm in which you can create and manipulate the object and then we have large standard library this contains pre built modules and packages for a wide range of tasks which includes file handling network communication and web development and finally we have portability and integration This refers to its ability to run on various platforms and its capacity to integrate with the other programming languages and technologies. Now, let us discuss some applications of Python. First application on the list is machine learning and AI. Python is the go-to language for machine learning and artificial intelligence. Some of the libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch and Scikit-learn enable the development of predictive models and neural networks. Next we have web development python is widely used in a web development frameworks such as django and flask make it easier to create an web application python scripts helps in handling request managing databases and creating dynamic web pages and then we have game development python can be used to create games pygame library enable the creation of 2d games and simulation and then we have data analysis and visualizations Python along with the libraries like NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib is used for data analysis and enabling processes and also for graph creations. And then we have networking programming. Python involves a few libraries like sockets which is used to create 
manage and communicate with the network connections like TCP, UDP sockets and facilitating the development of network applications and services. And then we have DevOps and infrastructure as a code. Python is used in DevOps for software development, automation, operation collaboration, configuration management and CI-CD pipelines. And then we have cybersecurity. Python involves the creation of security tools and scripts to detect the vulnerabilities, analyze threats, and safeguard systems. Python flexibility enables the rapid development of security solutions as well as for the automation of security tasks. Finally, we have IoT, which means Internet of Things. Python is a versatile language for building IoT applications because it is used to develop embedded devices, process sensor data, and enable the communication with the IoT platforms. Let us know some popular Python frameworks. But before that, what do you mean by framework? A framework is a similar to a blueprint for developing software. It is already existing structure that becomes the foundation for your project. Consider it is a pre-built skeleton that allows you to focus on unique aspects of your application rather than reinventing the wheel. First, we have Django, which is used for web application. And then we have Flask and Pyramid. It is used for web development. We also have Laravel. It is a popular PHP web framework that is used for various web development purpose. And then we have Cherry PY. It is a lightweight and minimalistic Python web framework and used for specific projects where simplicity and minimalism are preferred. And then we have Fast API and Tornado. Both has gained attention for its speed and simplicity in creation of robust APIs. Now, let's move on to the libraries of Python. So, what do you mean by libraries? Libraries is a set of pre-written code modules that performs specific functions. It is similar to a toolkit that Python developers can use to save time and effort while developing a software. First, we have Pandas. It is used for data analysis and manipulation, especially with the structured data. Next, we have NumPy. This is especially for numerical computations and data manipulation in a Python. Then, Keras. It is an API as well as a Python library that simplifies the deep learning model building. And then we have PyTorch. This library provides a flexible platform for deep learning research and development. And we also have Matplotlib. This is a popular library for data visualization and creating plots and charts. Following this, we have Scikit-Learn. This is a machine learning library for building and deploying machine learning models. After this, we have Seaborn. It is a Python data visualization library offering a higher level interface for creating attractive statistical plots. Finally, we have Plotly. It is an interactive graphic library that allows you to create interactive web-based data visualization. Let us see the basic syntax of Python. As you all know that hello world is a common phrase used in a programming language to demonstrate a basic program. So here, the print function in a Python is used to display the text or a given data on the screen. By calling the print function with a hello world as an argument, we instruct Python to display the text as an output. Next. Here is a list of some companies that uses Python for their operations and development. Google, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Instagram, and we also have Dropbox, Spotify, NASA, IBM, and Cisco, and few more. Let us discuss about career opportunities of Python. So we have software development, web development, machine learning engineering, data scientist, and artificial intelligence specialist and also cloud engineering, game development, automation engineering, data engineering, as well as a research analyst. Let's discuss on salary. According to the Glassdoor data, the average annual salary in India for Python developer is around 6 lakhs per annum, whereas in USA, for the similar position, it is around 6,401 dollars. And for the backend developer, the average annual salary is around 8.3 lakhs per annum in India. Whereas in USA, for the same position, it is around $7,800. In India, the average annual salary for full stack developer is 10 lakhs per annum. Whereas in USA, for the same role, it is $8,900 per annum. Now, 
Let's learn how to download and install Python on Windows. First, open the web browser, then type Python, hit the enter button. You can see that welcome to python.org. Click on this one to open a Python official website. Once you are on a website, look for the downloads tab. You can get all the details related to Python here. Click on this one. Now you are able to see that download the latest version for Windows. You can also see the version number here. So just click on this one. Python is downloaded. Double click on this one. Now, it is most important to click on this checkbox to add a Python path to our system. And click on install now. Installing is happening now. Python is completely installed now. We'll just close this one. Now you can confirm that whether the Python is completely installed in our system or not by going through command prompt. Just type python space hyphen hyphen version. Hit the enter button. Now you can see that python 3.12.0 is a version number. Or else if you got in any error that it will show that python was not found then you have to again install the python properly let's install jupyter for that we just have to type install jupyter hit the enter button now it is downloading now we'll check a jupyter version number as well by typing jupyter hyphen hyphen version yeah, it is showing all the packages with their version numbers so this is properly installed in our system now now we'll create one new folder for jupyter on desktop say python programming so just open this one we'll open command prompt for this page now will open Jupyter Notebook. Hit the enter button. So this opens a new web browser. The screen that you are seeing is a Jupyter Notebook. Now open a new notebook. Click on this new tab. Notebook. Then select the kernel as a Python 3. Select it as the same. Now it is ready for Python programming. So let's begin with some basics of Python. I will just zoom this one. Let's say x is equals to 10. And we'll print the value of x. Just execute the cell. You are getting 10 as a value. You can also check the data type of our x by typing print of type of x. So just execute the cell. We have 10 as an output as well as an integer as a data type of a x. Now let's try for the string. Consider a is equals to single quote for each and every strings. Edureka. Here a is in a variable and edureka is a value that is stored in the a. Got it? So let's try to print the value of a. Print of a. And also we'll check the data type of a by typing print of type of a. Now you can see that edureka is printed here and it is a type of a string. Yes. Let's check for hello world program. Just type it as print then hello world. Just execute the cell. You will get a hello world program. It is a very basic program. Now we will do some simple arithmetic operations. Let's say a is equals to 5 and b is equals to 8. Let's try for addition. Let's print a plus b. Then execute the cell. We are getting 13 as a output. Let's try for subtraction, multiplication and division as well. Print a minus b. Same for multiplication and for division. Let's execute this. We are getting all values. So a minus b is minus 3. 
a multiplication b is 40 and a division b is 0 0.625. Now we will see some Python conditional statement. In conditional statement, we can use equals, not equals, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. Now we will see that how conditional statement works. Let's say a is equals to 26 and b is equals to 99. And then the condition is if b is greater than a, then it has to print that b is greater than a. Let's execute this one. The output is printed as b is greater than a. Now we will see how else if statement works. Let's say a is equals to 48, then b is equals to 48. And the condition is if b is greater than a, then it has to print b is greater than a. Else, another condition is if a is equals to b, then it has to print both are equal, which means a and b. So a and a and b are equal. Let's execute this one. It is showing a and b are equal. Okay, let's take another example for else condition. Let's say a is equals to 100, then b is equals to 85. And the condition is if b is greater than a, print b is greater than a. Else if another condition, if a it is equals to b, it has to print equals a and b are equal or else it has to print a is greater than b. So let's execute this one. So we are getting output as a is greater than b because the condition is b is greater than a. We have a value as a equals 100 and b is equals to 85. Anyway, value of an A is greater. So, this condition is not satisfied and it will search for other condition. So, the other condition is A equals B. So, this condition is also not satisfied. So, it will directly skip up to the else part and it will print the statement. That is, A is greater than B. Let us know about loops in Python. Basically, we have two types of loops. First one is for loop and second one is while loop. So, first we will see for for loop and we will see how it works. Here loop is used for iterating over a sequence. For example, n is equals to 4. For i in range, we know the value of n is 4. Then print value of i. Execute the cell. So we are getting the output as 0, 1, 2, 3. Next we have another loop that is while loop. So this loop is used to execute a block of statement repeatedly until a given condition is satisfied. Let's say count is equals to 0 and the condition with a while loop while count is less than 3 then count is equals to count plus 1 you have to print at your echo. Okay, let's execute this one. It is printing edureka, edureka, edureka for three times until this condition is satisfied. This is all about the basics of Python. With this, we have come to the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and keep learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!